Hi, Leslie Rogowski here, Creative Director for The Beadsmith. Welcome to another step-by-step -step beading lesson. Today we're going to make great simple cuffs using an assortment of different size seed beads and the fabulous gem duos. We had a lot of fun gathering samples of the gem duos and making different color combinations, but check out the gem duos. There's so many other finishes, so this is just sort of a splattering of different finishes. We have Gold Splash, Silver Splash, Metal Lust, Duets, Picasso, Travertine, Nebula, what a great sheen on those. Here's a little Pearl Shine, your opaques, and your matte opaques. The absolutely fabulous backlit, some more Pearl Shines in a more opaque color. This is the Madras Cuff. It comes to you courtesy of Nila Kabalova. To have the best success with this project, you really should have a working familiarity with flat peyote stitch and how to end and add thread. But it's really a beginner, advanced beginner project. And I'm gonna give you some tips for that along the way. You ready? Let's get started. Alrighty, let me walk you through the materials that you need. Of course, you need Gem Duos. We're gonna use the backlit petroleums, two colors of size eights, one color of size 11s, and a size 15, your size 12 needles, a few jump rings that are slim enough to fit through a size eight seed bead for your clasp enclosure, and of course, a clasp of your choice. And then up to you, you can use some kind of a snip or my favorite tool of all time, the thread zapper. Okay, so for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna work with a little short piece of thread. So, to start with the base cuff, you're gonna string five of the base cuff color size eight beads. One, two, three, four, five. Then you can see, this is my method of working, but it works for me. I've taken the tail and in your project, you're gonna leave about eight inches of tail because you're gonna use it at one end of the cuff once you get the cuff made. So I just like to wrap the thread around my finger and tuck the little extra tail between my other fingers so I can hold on to my piece and work to pick up beads and use my thumb against my finger to manipulate the beads. So you can see how I'm holding it there. Okay, so we have a peyote strip First row, five beads. I'm gonna pick up another one. And this is just basic, flat, odd count peyote. So on one side, you're just gonna skip a bead and sew through the next, like this. And I'll move my thumb in a minute. And you wanna make sure that, that those beads sit side by side. Can you see that there, how they sit side by side? If you already should have a working familiarity with peyote stitch, you're probably going, okay, Leslie, get on with it. Here we go. I'm gonna pick up another bead. One of the cool things about this project, I learned a new way to do the odd count turn. So I picked up a bead, I'm gonna skip a bead, go through the next bead. So that's the, the fourth bead in my row. You can see right there, and I have one bead loose and one bead I'm sewing through. I'm gonna pull that bead around. And again, you're gonna have a piece where you have two beads side by side, then one, two beads side by side, and one. Now, here is the new way that I learned to do an odd count turn. First, I'm gonna string a bead, and I now have two loose beads. So give me a second, I'm gonna tie these tail thread and working thread into a knot. Just like this, I'm just gonna drop the needle. It's gonna stay on the fire line, which is kind of a nice feature because the thread is stiff. And by tying these together, you can see that, whoops, the beads sit side by side the way they're supposed to. I'm gonna finish my knot now because I had just done one hitch and I'm gonna finish the other hitch of this to make a nice neat little square knot at the end. And you can see the telltale in and out of the P 
peyote stitch, which is very cool. Okay, so the odd count turn is always at the side of your piece where the tail thread is. There's a good tip for you. Now I'm going to sew back through the bead I just added towards the piece. And I'm going to work in peyote stitch, just really basic, picking up a bead, sewing through the next out bead, picking up a bead, and sewing through the next out bead. And then on the non-tail side, you do the easy turn. And I'm just going to pick up a bead and go back across the row. Pick up a bead, go right back through that bead that's sticking out. Just like that. And I'm going to work across the row. And again, this for best success with this project, this process should be relatively familiar to you. Now, I'm going to go through the next to the last bead, and here is what I've been talking about, the new way that I learned to do an odd count turn. Coming out of the next to the last bead, I pick up another bead, and now check this out. I'm going to bring my needle from back to front so I can see what I'm doing under the thread loop that I just tied to come right back up between the first and second beads, like this. And I'm not going to pull really tight because I want that bead to sit sideways, like that. So I came from back to front, underneath the loop, and now I'm going to go through the bead I just added towards the band that I'm stitching. And that bead sits right in place. Cool, right? I'm going to pick up another bead. And as soon as I start to add that next bead through the out bead, you can see that that's going to sit in place. And I'm going to keep going back and forth and back and forth. Now, pay attention when you do that odd count turn. I want to show you what not to do. If you pull that little under the loop stitch too tight, your piece is going to start to curve. This side here, you can see it's starting to bow. So you want to make sure that your stitching is nice and even and a little bit loose on that turnaround so your piece stays straight and doesn't bow. And after you do a couple rows, here we go. I have a lot more done. And you can see how on the side with the tail thread, you can see a little bit of extra thread, which in this case isn't going to matter because we're going to be putting side embellishment on. So you're going to make your keep working odd count peyote and make your strip as long as you need less than like a half an inch. So like when you're about a half an inch short of where you think your cuff is going to be, just stop and leave the working thread uncut. So here I have a nice long strip. I know it's a lot of threads. Get used to it. <laughs> okay. So I have my tail side with all the little twisty turns. When you're at the point where you're going to, you, you know, you think, okay, my strip is almost long enough. So you're going to have a working thread with a needle. And I'm going to take my other needle off here. And we're going to make a tapered tip so that the end is going to look like this. It's really easy because if you think about it, all this end meat on this cuff, all it needs is that little tip bead because the way peyote stitch sits, they have like a natural sort of angled side, which works very well in lots of designs. And you can only do a tip, a tapered tip to a point in odd count peyote because you need that single bead in the middle. All right, so in order to put the tip bead on, I'm going to flip this around because I'm right-handed, so I'm going to hold my piece in my left hand. You want to have that bead in here. So you have to sew through following the existing thread paths to come out in order to place that bead there. So I'm going to go straight through two beads like that. And then I'm going to go 
straight through the remaining three beads to come out the side, second side bead. And by the way, everything I'm doing is according the, to the tutorial that you can find on our website. Now I'm going to come back in the side bead and the next bead at that little angle. And I'm in position to pick up another size eight bead and there you go. Tip bead, nice little tapered tip. We go from here right into the side embellishment and adding the gem duos. So it's gonna to start to get really fun from now on once you get that sort of base cuff done. Okie dokie. I'm going to pick up one size 15, one size 11, the contrasting color size eight that matches the size 15, another size 11, and another size 15. So I have my little edging. Okay, I'm going to skip a bead on the side that I'm exiting and go in the next bead. And I'm just gonna go through that one bead like this. And we have that cute little side edging. Now I'm gonna pick up a size 15 and the size 11 and a gem duo. I'm just gonna get it right through there. Boy, they are slippery on this surface. Okay. And I wanna show you how you wanna make sure when you pick it up that it's sitting like this with the open hole facing towards the end. So I'm gonna pick up the 11 and the 15 again and I'm gonna sew out through the other side. I'm gonna go through the eight directly opposite the one that I did the first side embellishment for. So here we go. All right, and the, that is gonna sit right there. So now I'm gonna pick up the 15, 11, 8, 11, and 15 to make the embellishment on the other side. 15, 11, 8, 11, 15. My fingers are sticking to the beads. And I'm gonna go in the first hole. Now we're gonna pick up the little seed beads to match the other side of the gem duo. You're gonna pick up a 15 and an 11. You're gonna go through the open gem duo hole Oh, and here, this is really important. Before you use any two hold beads, make sure that both of the holes are clear. So when I pick up the beads, usually I just give a look and see if I can see through those holes. So I'm going through the gem duo hole, which I previously checked to make sure it was open. And now I'm gonna pick up the seed beads that go on the other side. An 11, that sits next to the gem duo. And a 15. And I'm gonna go out that first bead where I started the first embellishment. And I'm actually going to sew through the whole loop that I first added on the side. All those seed beads. So you can see how that's attached there. And I'm gonna sew entirely through this and go into that first size eight and out the next one. So here, I'm gonna sew through all these beads. Make sure you don't skip any. And I'm gonna go through that last 15 and into the side bead, just the eight. Don't go through the 15 that's there for the gem duo. Get that in position here for you. Through the 15, through the eight, Just the one eight, like that. 
So now you have your first Gem Duo and Side Embellishment unit finished. To move up the band, you're simply going to come out the very next side, size 8. You see how the needle's just coming through like that? And the thread is just going to sit nice and hidden. Now we're just going to repeat this again and again and again till we get a whole row and remember this one is finished except for the jump rings we're going to come all the way down to the end and you're going to check the fit and you're going to see if you have enough first of all to close around your wrist and also you want to make sure that you have enough of a band here to add one final unit so once you have that done you're going to repeat how you add the little tip bead and tape how it tapers naturally to a point. I'm going to re-thread my needle. Once you've added enough rows to make sure that you have enough to add that last little unit of gem duos and side beads, you're going to take the tail thread. Remember in the beginning I said you're going to use that thread. Here's where that comes into play. I'm going to re-thread my needle. My tip is to pull it down to the between your fingers so you can barely see it. Bring the eye of the needle to the thread and see if you can wiggle that through. You want to flatten the end a little bit. And size 12 needles may take you a time or two. So let's go down to the end and we're going to repeat how to make that tapered tip. You want to make sure that your thread is exiting from a side bead. Now in this case we have the Audis, so we have to go into the next side bead and add the next row of two size eights to taper up to the sides and it's just going to leave us that single space to put the tip bead. So we'll get that, these on there and you can see how the sides angle up and we just need to put the tip bead in. I'm going to do exactly what I did in the beginning and I'm going to come in from the side, cut the next bead down from where my thread is exiting and I'm going to come in. Two beads or three beads. Now I'm holding it so that you guys can see it better. Come on, there we go. So it's coming in just through those two beads and we call this um, following existing thread paths so you're not crossing over in a pattern that is foreign to, in this case, peyote stitch. Now I have to come out the other side so I'm going to go through these three beads right here. One, two, three. And come out the side. I might have to do this in two Okay, so I just went through two beads. You want to make sure you go through that last bead to exit the side. And then you're going to come through the first side bead and the little Audi bead right there. And you're just going to add that last tip bead. And so through the two edge beads to add that side bead, that tip bead. And there you go and you're going to have that tip. Now you're going to weave in the end to secure this thread and I, all you do is sew back into the piece crisscrossing following existing thread paths and it'll just hold there. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You're almost going to do exactly like you added the tip bead. Doesn't matter, you want to go back into the piece through the next bead over and go through a couple beads. And then I'm actually going to pull my thread up again to the bead right next to it and I'm going to come out the side bead again. Don't pull so tight on this that your tip starts to curl in. The tip bead might want to cup a little bit so just take it easy on the tension. You're just going to keep weaving back into the piece through a couple beads. And I'm going to do a little figure eight here at the end. I end, when I'm working with a piece of thread that has to end, I like to come out from the middle and not the side because it's really hard to trim when the tail comes out of the side without showing it or even worse, damaging your piece. 
So I'm going to sew back in. Here's where it's coming out. I'm just going to sew right back in, in kind of a crisscross, like a figure eight, really. And I'm going to go through just two beads so I don't come out the side. Like this. Pull it tight. Now you can use a thread zapper or a snip. Nice and close, I'm going to come right down there. And voila. So at this point, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have your piece all made and ready to put your jump rings on. The jump rings, you need to have open jump rings. And you need a, a couple different pairs of pliers just to open your jump rings. I can do it myself. You always want to turn them this way. You never want to open your jump rings this way. And I'm going to take my jump ring and slide it through that tip eight bead. Like that. Close it up. Da 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 da. And you're going to do it to the other side. Now I suggest that you add a third and a fourth jump ring to attach your clasp so that when you're putting this on and off, the tension is on the two jump rings and not exactly on the piece. So, Neela, you did a great job on this. By the way, I'm sure, because I know from my past videos, that you guys are saying, wait, show us your ring, wait, show us your ring. This is a little piece of the exact project that I just stepped out for you, except I didn't bead all the way around with the gem duos. So I did a little swatch and I made the band long enough to fit around my finger and zipped it together. That's a technique for another video. But how fun is that? If you end up with a few gem duos left, it's exactly what I just showed you. The Madras Cuff courtesy of Matura Beads and Beadsmith. Happy beading!